Hi, welcome along to another video. Lots of information to get through this time. Just a reminder, on the Weather and Climate Modification News website, there are now 1,557 articles, piece of information, etc. If you click on the new and recently added button, you'll find all the latest info so you can stay up to date and it's more likely it's there before it's here on YouTube. So firstly we'll start with Harp, everybody's favourite. Then we'll go through the countries, different continents, and then the projects, mainstream media articles, academic papers, etc. Everything else. Please don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and of course share this information. So starting with HARP, an article from the 4th of November in the Anchorage Daily News, HARP experiments could cause artificial aurora over Alaska this weekend. There's a nice picture of the facility. Watchers of the night sky along much of Alaska's road system may catch a colourful splotch of light up high in the air over the weekend. The aurora in the ionosphere is a byproduct of a rare four day long set of experiments at the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program or HARP in Gakona. And afterwards, with an article from the 24th of November from the TechSmart website, those northern lights in Alaska were not of natural origin but artificial. To study the formation of the northern lights and the behaviour of plasma waves in the ionosphere, researchers created miniature northern lights in the sky above Alaska, a phenomenon visible up to 500 kilometres away. Alaskans saw an unusual phenomenon last in, in the form of a small aurora borealis. This is a series of experiments carried out by several American universities using the radio transmitters of the HARP Observatory. Interesting radio transmitter that creates artificial auroras. So the next time you see an aurora somewhere, you should consider whether it's natural or whether it's artificial, especially if it's up to 500 kilometers away. That's approximately 400 miles. OK, going across the countries now, across various continents, we'll start in the United States in Colorado. There's an article in the Aspen Times, this week in Aspen History, where there was a report with the headline, Snowmakers Are Everywhere. And this was in 1964 on November the 20th. He's talking about snowmaking machines on all sides this winter. The snowmaking machines in this case will fire silver iodide crystals. Aspen hired the weather modifier F. Neil Bosco of Denver and they paid him $250 to produce more snow in a six day period than would have normally fallen. The success or failure was to determine whether he would be hired for a three month period at $1,500 a month. Local businessmen, people, would have to pay the bill. And it says at the end there, it's been tried several times before, but there wasn't really provided any substantial evidence of the success of it, even though the technology had been used for 15 years by them. As we'll see in a bit, that $1,500 a month is very old school compared to the millions you can make nowadays. From the 28th of November, 2020, so three years ago, Vail Resort's cancellation of cloud seeding this winter could mean less water in the streams. Now this was covered at the time in previous videos on this channel. Due to budget shortfalls, the cloud seeding program, the longest running in the state for 44 years, was ending. This has resulted in a $300,000 loss of funding for cloud seeding activities over the central Rocky Mountains. So in, nine, in the 1960s, $1,500 a month. So over the period, probably 10 grand, something like that. 
and in 2020 it's three hundred thousand dollars over to idaho and a collaborative project produces more water for southeast idaho valued at over 31 million dollars during the 2022-2023 winter season high country resource conservation and development area incorporated and Idaho Powers Collaborative Upper Snake River Valley Cloud Seeding Project, Weather Modification Project, on average increased the snowpack by 8% over what Mother Nature would have dropped on her own. The value of this extra water is over $31 million. The Weather Modification Project will begin the 2023-2024 season operations on the 1st of November 2023, so approximately three or four weeks ago. Idaho Powers Aircraft will conduct weather modification operations through to March the 31st, 2024, while ground-based cloud seeding generators will operate as needed through to the end of April, the 30th of April, 2024. There's another article about the 2023-2024 season when it begins and ends you can find the links to all of this information in the information section of this video Montana in the Hungry Horse News yesterday's 50 years ago October the 26th 1973 a public hearing was scheduled for proposed weather modification cloud seeding up the south fork of the flathead. The idea was to raise the amount of precipitation rain by 10% so there would be more snowpack and thus run off to fill the reservoir for power production. Nevada. This also takes in the Desert Research Institute in the local Las Vegas Fox 5 news channel making it rain. Cloud seeding effort aims to bring more water to Red Rock Canyon. So this article from the 23rd of November talks about a family where the landowner died and the family called up DRI, Desert Research Institute, to ask about a machine that was on the property and DRI explained to this person that it's a cloud seeder and seeds the clouds over Mount Charleston. When the person learns the machine helps generate snow and rain from passing storms, an idea flashed like a lightning bolt. They said, well, could we do something that would give rain to Red Rock Canyon? They're like, absolutely, 100%. You might as well add brav on the, to the end of that, wouldn't you? And they're like, absolutely, 100% brav. Do it, man. Yeah, come on. Trash journalism at its best. The article continues, a cloud seeding machine, a weather modification machine, has a hefty price tag. One, the person concerned was determined to find a way to pay. The person appealed to the public in a meeting held online. In one month, last fall, last autumn, the small non-profit group aptly named Save Red Rock raised $100,000 for the generator. So again, 1960s, 1,500 a month. 2023, $100,000 for one generator. There we can also see in the article, we knew Save Red Rock, a small non-profit, is not going to be able to fund it in perpetuity. During this year's legislative session in Nevada, state lawmakers passed a cloud seeding bill unanimously allocating $1.2 million taxpayer money for the Desert Research Institute's weather modification programs across the state. The generator we've just been talking about will be funded for at least two years. I bet the people who were doing it in the 1960s wish they were doing it in the 2020s. Thousands, millions. Over to Texas and skipping back a couple of months to August the 19th 2023 from the San Antonio Express News. Weather modification is happening in Texas. What is it and will it bring rain to San Antonio? Now you can see in the image, silver iodide being flared off from the aeroplane. 
A state-funded effort in the 1990s was integral in starting several rainfall enhancement projects across Texas. Now, for those of you that have followed the Texas information, you know it was started way before the 1990s. Today, seven cloud seeding projects, seven weather modification projects are underway across the state of Texas. The combined weather modification effort covers 31 million acres, which is more than a sixth of the state's landmass. The largest is the South Texas Weather Modification Association. It covers a 10 county area back to Idaho from the 25th of October 2023. There is a paper on the radar detection of weather modification effects in wintertime orographic cloud systems, also known as SNOWY. Over to the UK. From the UK government website, there is a research and analysis paper. What impact do climate change misinformation and disinformation have? Evidence for the impact of misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation and disinformation have been used by various movements, including governments, the IPCC, the World Meteorological Organization, lots of official people use misinformation and disinformation, <laughs> but the ones the government wants to warn you about, they're associated with a range of harms, including violence and vandalism. The examples are the invasion of the US Congress in 2021. Interesting, because the United States Congress is in the United States and not in the United Kingdom. Attacks on 5G masks during the pandemic. There were attacks on 5G masks outside of the pandemic as well. You know, we need to worry you and concern you. This is what misinformation and disinformation is, is attaching pandemic to attacks on 5G masks. And then of course, there's the threats against climate scientists accused of geoengineering extreme weather. Moving over to the United Arab Emirates. There is a lot of flooding and disruption related to the United Arab Emirates weather modification program. So from the 21st of November in the UAE, the Friday downpour in the country resulted in widespread disruption with heavy rain and thunder affecting various areas. This led to closures of roads and even cancellations of flights. The article continues, cloud seeding missions in the UAE have been continuous, etc. Also from the 21st of October, the NCM monitors these clouds as they move over the country and dispatches cloud seeding flights, weather modification flights to maximise rainfall over the country. From the 23rd of November, the NCM will dispatch cloud seeding flights to maximise rainfall in the country, November the 24th and 25th, that's this weekend. Also from the 23rd of October, UAE concludes major cloud seeding project using coordinated flights. So they're literally ending one one day and starting it the next day. Research plane identified best target clouds for another aircraft to seed. You can see the flares on the plane there. And some more detail on that. The National Center of Meteorology, the NCM, has concluded the field campaign titled Cloud Aerosol Electrical Interactions for Rainfall Enhancement Experiment. That's a new one on you, isn't it? CloudX. Through the UAE Research Program for Rain Enhancement Science, the UAE REP, in collaboration with Stratton Park Engineering Company, SPEC, a US-based company specializing in cloud physics research and instrumentation. From the 24th of October, Unlocking the Mystery, How It Rains in the Deserts of the UAE. In the past couple of days, some parts of the UAE have been hit by intense rainfall, even prompting alerts about dangerous weather conditions. But have you wondered how it actually rains in the Emirates? The short answer is cloud seeding, weather modification. So an article from the 24th of October, the campaign we just spoke about, rains in the UAE, month-long campaign to study cloud seeding concluded. The UAE has been modifying its weather since 1982. There's another picture there, of the flares attached to an aeroplane. And as part of the Khalij Times, 
published on Saturday the 21st of October, the UAE, on an average, conducts over 900 hours of cloud seeding missions every year, with the government making substantial investments in research and technology. When did cloud seeding missions begin in the UAE? The initial cloud seeding attempts took place in 1982, as a trial lasting for two months. By the end of 1990, the government established advanced facilities to address water security challenges. Cloud seeding operations have been carried out annually. Climate modification. In the United Arab Emirates, 22nd November, over now to India, from the 23rd of November, 2023, Delhi to trial artificial rain solution to air pollution woes. In the wake of persistent and hazardous air pollution levels in Delhi, India's capital, India's capital is exploring an innovative approach to mitigate this environmental crisis, artificial rain through cloud seeding. Innovative gives you the idea that it's new. It's, you know, a bit, oh, let's, let's try this new thing. India has had a weather modification program for decades. There is nothing innovative about weather modification. Many of you will have heard and seen in other areas of this world that um, there's a rewriting of history going on. Everything's new. Everything's happening from now or the last 10 years through this program or that program, mainly in the UFO world. There's lots of comments there about how it's almost like the last century's information is being ignored and everything's all... It's from now. It's from when the New York Times released Info four years ago. It's all new and it's never been done before. And that's exactly the same in the weather modification world. When did weather modification really kick off across the planet? 1946, 1947. What else do you know about? If we said 1946, 1947, nuclear bombs is one. And the other one, of course, is Roswell. Even though stuff was going on before, the main thing started off, most people say, in the modern era, in the modern era, 1947, Roswell, off you go. And what many people are now seeing in many areas is the rewriting of history. For a new generation, it's all new and it's only happening now. Whereas those of you over, say, 40 years old who have been following this all your life, what you know isn't real anymore. Doesn't exist. Doesn't matter what issues you're dealing with, make sure you carry the history of it with you so that history cannot be rewritten to serve the people who believe they're in authority on this day. From Why on News, for those of you that don't know Why on News, that's the place to get your news. Delhi's pollution woes likely to be solved by artificial rain after IIT Kanpur steps in. That's from November the 8th. The residents of the Indian capital Delhi and the national capital region surrounding it may soon get respite from the hazardous air they have been breathing at least since the beginning of this month. The Delhi government will attempt to induce artificial rain through cloud seeding this month. And that will be carried out in the third week of November. So currently... In the Indian Express, weather and government efforts equally important in curbing pollution, Delhi Environment Minister says. There was a mention, this is from the 22nd of October, so a month ago, there was a mention of the possibility of cloud seeding to bring pollution levels down in Delhi. Is there clarity on that? It was an idea. Experts from IIT Kanpur were called. They said some experiments were done, etc, etc. Experiments, huh? not activities experiments because it's all new you know no one knows what's happening it's an experiment right? in the hindustan times from the 20th of november clouds over delhi government's plan to introduce rain amid air pollution permissions are required before the experiment can take place remember this is behavioral thought modification if you use the word experiment it implies it's new and it's an experiment but if you use the word activity it means it's in it's being done it's known if you think critically about the wording in these articles they're easy to rip apart mumbai 21 november cloud seeding to be done if needed in mumbai cloud seeding if required 
from the 22nd of November. Cloud seeding measures to control air pollution in Mumbai. The civic body has already approached a Dubai-based company, United Arab Emirates, which has 100% accuracy in weather modification, and a memorandum of understanding will be signed with it. So, the government of Mumbai is partnering with the United Arab Emirates to carry out the weather modification, and they have a 100% accuracy in doing it. As long as you don't mind flooding, death, and property destruction. 100% guaranteed. In the Indian Express, 21st of November, Mumbai air pollution, BMC in talks with Dubai-based firm to carry out weather modification. Travelling north now to Pakistan, in Lahore, artificial rain in Lahore on cards. The Punjab government has started contemplating a plan to use artificial rain in the provincial capital later this month in an attempt to curb the problem of pollution. Artificial rain, also known as cloud seeding, is a weather modification technique that aims to stimulate precipitation. From the 23rd of November, the article says this will be the first time for any government in the country to use artificial rain. This is an absolute lie. Pakistan has had a weather modification program previously and they were the first country to say that they weren't really happy with doing it and they weren't going to do it because what they found was is that you can turn the rain on but you cannot turn it off so in other words what they were saying were is that you can carry out cloud seeding and start rainfall increase rainfall but there is no method to actually stop that you have to just let it run its course so if that's causing extreme weather events you cannot stop that so it's no surprise, is it, that people think this is all a very new thing when you have the media that's supposed to be informing you of what's going on state it's the first time in the country to use artificial rain, probably on November the 28th or 29th this month. So in a few days' time. It's a complete lie. It's not even misinformation or disinformation. That's just a downright open, blatant lie by the media. I will put links to the countries from the website along with the links to the articles so that you can see when I say these people are lying or spreading disinformation or misinformation you yourself can go and check the information that I have on the website you can see the history of the country concerned and what they've been doing and what they've done and you can decide for yourself whether these media articles are accurate or not when they say it's an experiment or it's never been done before etc etc or there's no scientific proof to say that it works i mean hey we've been doing it for over 75 years now but it doesn't work right <laughs> you can go and find out for yourself if you choose to put the time into the research and you will see that i'm not just ranting here and i will take on anyone on this subject that wants to say I'm lying. I don't need to lie. And likewise, if you educate yourself, you'll be able to take on people on this subject as well. Because there is no need to lie. The information is there. You're not a conspiracy theorist when you're dealing with this. Australia. As many of you know, Snowy Hydro operate in, in the Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria area. They regularly cause extreme weather events via their atmospheric moisture redistribution program, such as extreme flooding, fires, forest fires, you know, the usual stuff like what happens in California, etc. In the energy news from the 19th of November, the race for climate control, a new global challenge. A new global challenge. So not a global challenge or not a global challenge that's been going on for decades. Snowy Hydro has been modifying the weather for like 50 years in Australia, redistributing atmospheric moisture for 50 years. That has consequences sooner or later. But we all know Australia has gone over a tipping point, just like California has, just like Canada has. And then they say in Australia, power company Snowy Hydro is running a campaign in the Snowy Mountains to increase snowfall using silver iodide particle generators. So they're running a, a campaign. There's no mention there that it's been ongoing for 40, 50 years. 
In the following paragraph, the global adoption of cloud seeding, weather modification, cloud seeding is not isolated practice in Australia. Countries such as India, Thailand, the US and China have also adopted these techniques as well as the UAE. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, including Australia, six countries they're mentioning. The World Meteorological Organization states that there are between 50 and 100 countries with active weather modification programs. And coincidentally, it's the big countries. It's not the little Caribbean countries with 100 people on the island. You know, we're talking huge land masses. I mean, India, China and the United States is like half the planet. Notice how they don't say along with the United States, Mexico and Canada, because that broadens your picture out. Vast area. They don't say Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia, because that broadens the area out. Over to New Zealand, from the 22nd of November, in the aviation section of the News Hub, global aid agencies Governments queue up to fight climate change with the new Kiwi plane. So we're fighting climate change. Remember, this is that thing like, you you know, you've got a plastic toothbrush. You don't take your own cup to the coffee shop when you buy a coffee. You know, you're the problem. The new Super Pack XS TOL was originally designed decades ago as a top dressing plane. It's now used for rain making in drought stricken areas. So modifying the weather. But there's a climate crisis. It's almost becoming an oxymoron. Or maybe it's just moronic. Indonesia. Bali declares a state of emergency. 22nd of October 2023. The head of the BNPB has promised to deploy more aircraft for weather modification operations in Bali once the fires in Sumatera and Kalimantan are extinguished. So put the fires out, then they're going to modify the weather. Okay. Also from Indonesia, 25th of October, they'll be using weather modification technology, TMC, to put out the fires. TMC is Taurus Molecular Cloud. If you want to search for it, it's TMC 65. Taurus Molecular Cloud 65. And you'll see it's ground-based cloud generation, basically. From the Jakarta Post, November the 20th, so one month later, in addition, the Environment and Forestry Ministry collaborated with the National Research and Innovation Agency and the BRGM on weather modification technology through artificial rain engineering last July. So you've got October, July, it's ongoing. Over to the Philippines. From the Filipino government website, among the measures being implemented for water security are cloud seeding operations, weather modification operations. That's from the 23rd of November 2023. So that's a roundup of the countries. Now we deal with everything else. We're nearly there. Bit of a long one this time. The Silver Lining Project. This is Bill Gates funded project. This is the updates from the 35th meeting of the parties to the Montreal Protocol, Montreal, Canada, outcomes related to solar radiation modification from the 6th of November 2023. The meeting saw increasing awareness of the relevance of stratospheric aerosol injection for the ozone layer and as a result for the delegates work, though it continues to be a small portion of the body's focus. Delegates from developing countries have little capacity to engage, but are influential. So in other words, if you're a small island developing state, you don't have any capacity to engage with these people, but your opinion will be listened to. And you'll be told you're influential and you're influencing it, but you're really not, okay? For those of you that have seen recent news about the ozone layer over the Antarctic, you will have seen that it's actually disappearing. It's not healing not getting better it's getting worse and many people have been saying for many years that SAI is stripping the ozone layer as well as obviously desensitizing you to the sun so when you have a sunny day you think it's extremely hot but that's because you live under white out skies and you are desensitized to the sun so 22 degrees starts to feel really really hot that's centigrade by the way 
for all you Americans out there. Not Fahrenheit. 25 degrees centigrade feels really hot, whereas 20 years ago it would take 35 degrees centigrade for you to feel like that. Through solar dimming and the artificial cooling of the planet, people wearing three-piece suits inside air-conditioned buildings come outside into a 25 degree heat and think it's really hot and there's a climate disaster happening. It's not. Your behaviour has been modified. That's what behavioural sciences are. From the securities.io website, also to do with also to do with DRI, we were talking about them earlier. 75 plus years on, cloud seeding remains controversial. Can it help the world's most polluted cities? So it's quite refreshing to see one article, but that's in a security website. How many of you look at the securities.io website? You might remember the experiment that went on without the government permission in Mexico recently by a company called Make Sunsets, headed up by a guy called Luke Eisman. And here we see the headline, because people are not happy with this person, especially David Keith, who wants to do his geoengineering projects, certainly doesn't want any competition. A rogue startup thinks it has a solution to climate change. The scientific community disagrees. Make Sunsets has been causing a stir among scientists for its rather unscientific approach to stratospheric aerosol injection. The company based in South Dakota has begun injecting sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere in latex balloons in an effort to keep planetary temperatures in a livable range long enough for other solutions to develop. And when they say it's an unscientific approach, there are other people doing identical things, such as SPICE, the Stratospheric Particle Injection for Climate Engineering program, the Silver Lining Project. There's all sorts of projects going on. So an independent startup doing it, that's unscientific, but when a former Harvard person, who's now at the University of Chicago, David Keith does it, it's science, right? It's all bad. They're all just as bad as each other. They are very, very dangerous people and should be stopped. An academic paper from the ETH Zurich Research Collection, Data for Impacts of Microphysics on Stratospheric Aerosol Injection of Solid Particles. That paper is in the review state, but is released on the 22nd of November. There is also another paper on the Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics page for the EGU, European Geosciences Union, from the 24th of October, so a month ago. Comparison of UK ESM1 and CESM2 simulations using the same multi-target stratospheric aerosol injection strategy. Finishing up now with the MSM mainstream media articles in The Economist from the 22nd of November. Solar geoengineering is becoming a respectable idea. No, it isn't. Fuck off. From the 23rd of November, Kenyan media. Does modern science already allow us to manage the weather? Weather manipulation is increasingly common around the world, but the dangers of privatisation and weaponization are abound. Now, interestingly, if you posted this picture, just as this picture on social media outlets, you would be called a chemtrail conspiracy theorist and there would be boards attached to your post explaining what the chemtrail conspiracy theory is. But this, of course, doesn't happen when the media show you identical pictures. You would do yourself a favour by not using the term chemtrails. Use the term weather modification. It's the simplest and easiest way to describe what it is. And it just serves other people when you call it chemtrails. They can just flick their wrist at you and tell you you're an idiot. Over to Yahoo News. This also appeared in the Canadian Yahoo News, but it's from the UK version. Could spraying chemicals into the atmosphere really stop or reverse global warming? No, it just fucks the atmosphere even more. Ozone stripping materials into the atmosphere. What do you think is going to happen? 20th of November 2023, that one. This is classically what we can say. Yahoo News is involved in disinformation, misinformation articles. You know, it's really bad, but we're going to do it anyway. 
and it might fuck things up but it might not it might solve it it might not let's not take the chance see and that my friends was a roundup of your news from this month at least as mentioned you can get um faster updates from the website or just come back in a month for another video like this use the information wisely get the information spread because things have stepped up in the way the public are talking about this and they're turning against this activity we are literally in a period where we can start to call out these people and get it stopped and that will benefit all of us on the planet well, the only people that won't benefit of course are the people making huge quantities of money out of it but for all the other people until we meet next time look after yourselves and take care